بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, it's, an, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. It's really nice to have met many of the uh, Muslims in this community so far, and I've only been here for 24 hours. So Alhamdulillah, it's, it's been nice. It's also been nice experiencing your very mild weather outside. It should be colder in the UK. I brought my minus 30 degree coat with me, and I'm not really using it. I left it in the hotel. My brothers and sisters, this life is filled with tests. And the tests that we go through, we sometimes feel as though those are the tests that are going to end our life. You'll notice in our society how people take pills to wake up. Some people take pills to go to sleep. Some people take pills to forget reality because the pressures of society and the pressure of reality is too much for our brain and our hearts to comprehend. And for many people in different parts of the world, they take their lives because of those pressures. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I was in what is said to be Canada's most beautiful city, Vancouver. And we were going over this bridge and as we're going over the bridge, the brother tells me, he says, this bridge has the highest suicide rate. I said, wow, mashallah. The highest suicide rate. Why am I on this bridge? Let's quickly get off of it, right? This is like the bridge, this is like Sirat, right? The bridge going to Jannah. Let's just get off of this bridge. And so subhanAllah, many people in life are suffering and struggling with challenges that they don't really know how to deal with. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us clearly in the Qur'an that we will be faced with these tests. It's a reality. Every single one of us will face challenges and tests and we will be facing them time and time again. You ask yourself, how many times have you failed a class at university? Not intentionally, right? Because some people fail intentionally, right? How many times have we failed classes? How many times did we not get that raise at work? How many times did we try to get married but that sister didn't accept or that brother didn't accept? How many times did we perform Salat al-Istikhara and I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, right? We always are faced with these challenges and whoever's messing with the microphone, please just jack up the volume and leave it up because I have a throat issue. If it's loud, it's good. So we see how subhanAllah, we are always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we should be at least, constantly turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him for help and ease. But yet those challenges become too much. The question is, and that's the, you know, the title of this topic today, that the grass is greener on the other side. So is the grass really greener on the other side. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah tells us, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu istahinu bil-sabri wa-salah inna Allah ma'al-sabiri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before telling us we're going to face hardships, tells us to seek help, seek assistance through Him by being patient, by praying our salah. When we pray our salah, we're reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we submit and forget everything else on earth. Just like a bank robber who's about to rob a bank or he's robbing it. And we see it in the movies and the cartoons, right? Someone goes into a bank, they're about to rob the bank. As they're inside trying to break into the vault, the police pull up. And this bank robber, he's faced with one choice, and that's the only choice. 
either come out submitting to the police or come out resist and face a consequence. As soon as he walks out of the bank, what do you hear the police saying? Freeze! What does he do? What does he do? He puts his hands up in the air. Freeze! He submits. He submits. He lets go of everything. He might have these big bags of money. He's walking out with money. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I robbed the bank. As soon as he comes through the doors, freeze! <laughs> all right? He's all freaked out. Submits. In our salah, we do pretty much the exact same thing. When we begin, Allahu Akbar, we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just getting rid of everything. We're submitting. We're raising our hands and tying our hands and we say, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing how we let go of everything attached to this world. We submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, Seek that protection, that help that you need by being patient and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our prayer. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us how we're going to be tested. Two verses later. وَنَقُصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He's going to test us. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us I'm going to test you with every single hardship you could possibly think of. For some people, it's going to be a test of wealth. For other people, it's a test of their children. For some, it's a test of loss of family members, relatives, friends, maybe their own life, the life of a spouse, the life of a child. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ The things that we would like to have. You know the day you're walking down the street, you're holding your phone, right? Allah provided you with your phone, that's a provision. You're walking down the street with your phone and as you're walking by, someone comes and... Oh no, my screen just broke. It's going to cost me 200 pounds to fix my screen. What's going to happen? I, my mom is going to kill me, my dad's going to kill me, right? Not in the literal sense. We start to panic, we start to worry, we start to wonder what's happened to the thing that I've gotten that I paid so much money for. We panic and worry not realizing that it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us that to begin with. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us that to begin with. But then what does Allah say? You're tested with the loss of a child. I was just in the car with the brother driving me here. SubhanAllah, really, really challenging test. His child at 13 months old passed away just a few days ago. And I asked him, I, he asked me, he says, did you sleep well? I said, Alhamdulillah, what about yourself? He said, oh, I went to bed at 4 a.m. I was like, SubhanAllah, were you busy preparing or something? What were you doing? He says, you know, my child just passed away and I'm so used to being awake looking after my child at night that my natural, you know, naturally he's used to being awake at that time. But his child's no longer here, but his body is naturally used to taking care of that child. That's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then say? وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says glad tidings for those that are patient. Glad tidings? Those who are patient, glad tidings? Yes, the grass is greener on the other side. And then he says, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً I want you to think of the time where you went through an extreme hardship. You're driving your car on the one day a year that it snows in London, right? 
And you don't have winter tires on because they don't even sell them in the UK. All right? We have them in Canada. It's mandatory in some places to have winter tires. You're driving your car, it's really slippery. And as you're driving down this old road, your car slides off the road at five miles an hour and hits into a brick wall. What's the first word that comes out of your mouth? What's the first word that comes out of your mouth? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ قالوا, those who are faced with a hardship, with a trial, what do they say? Do they say a four-lettered word? Do they say something bad? Do they swear? Do they start to sing a song? A lullaby? Rubber ducky? What do they do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who are faced with the hardship, قالوا, they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. They say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Today, we only say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon when someone's about to die or someone has died and we get that phone call. That's the only time we really think of saying inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Or when someone realizes all of their investments have just been lost. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Right? Why? Anytime we're faced with a hardship, the first thing that we're supposed to do is remind ourselves about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those that don't know, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. <clears throat> we are saying, to, to Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. So when any hardship comes our way, what we're actually saying is not only that we belong to Allah and will return to Allah, but we affirm and understand that this test was sent to us by Allah. The Prophet ﷺ teaches us that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, He tests them. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, He tests them. Now you might ask yourself, well I'm tested all the time, so does Allah love me? Because I'm not really that religious, I don't pray very often, and I look at, you know, either a Muslim brother or sister or someone who's not even Muslim who has all the wealth on earth, has everything that they want, they have no worries, no struggles, they're not being tested. That's a beautiful life. That's the kind of life that I want to live, right? Those are the things that we think of. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us not so that we can simply pass the test because there's times when we're going to fail. But when we fail the test, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was teaching us patience. He was teaching us patience. The question is, was I patient? Was I patient with that test? Was I patient with that test of Allah that He tested me with? And so when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ To those people, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends and showers down mercy and blessings upon those people. You failed your test, that's fine. You failed your class, that's fine. You lost your child, it hurts, that's fine. Because the point of the test was to turn to Allah. And if we passed it with patience, the grass will be greener on the other side. 
the grass will be greener on the other side. And let's take another example before we conclude, inshaAllah ta'ala, because I know my time is running out. We ask ourselves all the time, how will it be? How will it be on the day that we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I going to be someone who actually achieved righteousness in this world and got or will get goodness in the hereafter? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, those who receive their book in the right hand, how are they going to be? Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُوا كِتَابِيَهِ They're happy, they're excited, they receive their book in their right hand, they're extremely excited. هَا أُمُقْرَأُوا كِتَابِيَهِ This is my book. I didn't think this was going to happen to me. I remember all the things that I did in my life. I didn't think this was going to happen to me. Oh, now the grass is greener. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that you will be living, enjoying yourself. فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةٍ In a beautiful garden. Massive. You'll have rivers that are flowing of anything that you want. Gardens that are not only green, but gardens that are gold and gardens that are silver. Gardens of various different colors. Gardens of whatever you want to eat. قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَةٍ قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَةٌ كُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that we will be able to eat from the fruits of paradise. We'll have anything that you want. كُلُوا eat وَاشْرَبُوا drink Whatever you did in the past, this is your reward. You thought it was hard. You were patient with it. You were patient with the test. You returned to Allah. You constantly reminded yourself of the importance of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's your reward. You received your book. You're jumping for joy. You're excited. But what about the person that didn't receive it in this hand? What about the person that receives it in the left hand? What does that person say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, As for the person who receives his book in his left hand, he says, Ya laytani lam uta kitabiya. How I wish that I was never even given this book. How I wish that this never happened to me. Walam adrima hisabiya. Ya laytaha kanatil qadiya. This person regrets everything they did in their life to the extent that they wish when they died, that was the end of it. That there was no resurrection. They wish they would never stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They wish they never got their book. They wish they're not, not e even in the moment that they're in right now receiving that book in their left hand. And then he continues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَةِ مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَةِ This person says, my wealth has not done anything to me now. What benefit did I get from my money, my wealth? مَا أَغْنَى 
my wealth hasn't done anything for me in this position right now. I was someone of status. I was someone who rolled around in my bends, yo. Right? Chilling out, what's up? Right? Thinking I was the best on earth. Doing what I wanted to do. Going where I wanted to go. Having whatever I wished to have. That wealth that I used to have, that status that I used to have, where is it now? Is the grass going to be greener on the other side when we don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The verses continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that this person be taken, this person be taken, captured, held on to, strapped up with chains, and directed towards Jahannam. You wish she had that wealth? You wish she had that strength? You wish you had that status. You wish you had everything in life. But that doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. It's left. Now you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the question for you and I, my brothers and sisters, is where will we stand on that day? As in, what will be our position? Is the book going to be here? Is the book going to be here? In our lives, are we turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you want to test yourself right now, ask your best friend during the lunch break to step aside with you. This is a practical tip. You want to test yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your best friend or a close friend is sitting here right now, ask them during the lunch break that we're going to have in two minutes, ask them to step aside with you. And tell them, for the next hour, when I least expect it, punch me as hard as you can in my stomach. <laughs> and tell me what's the first thing that comes out of my mouth. And if it's not, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, then something's wrong. So my brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful deen. It's a religion, it's a faith that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he taught us and showed us as well through the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how we can live this life enjoying both the pleasures and the hardships of this life because when a hardship comes to us, we still see it as something sent from Allah, from our Creator. So we still enjoy it. And we know that through those hardships will come more pleasure in the hereafter. Because definitely, without a doubt, the grass is greener on the other side. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us towards what is best. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us upon Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard ourselves and protect our progeny and our children. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to understand this deen in a way that we can implement it easily in our lives and to help those with their lives. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Wa jazakumullahu khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.